in my video on flexitarians, I talk about how the benefits of eating a plant-based diet are not all or nothing. Right? Simple advice to increase the consumption of plant-derived foods with a parallel reduction in the consumption of foods from animal sources was found to confer a survival advantage, a live-longer advantage. They call it a pro-vegetarian eating pattern, just moving in that direction as a more gradual, gentle, doable approach. If you're dealing with a serious disease, though, like diabetes, avoiding some problem foods completely may be easier than attempting to moderate their intake. It's like you know, clinicians would never tell alcoholics to simply cut down on alcohol. Avoiding alcohol entirely is a more effective and ironically easier for a problem drinker. Paradoxically, asking patients to make a large change may be more effective than making a slow transition. Diet studies show that recommending more significant changes increases the changes that patients actually accomplish. It may help to replace the common advice, all things in moderation, with big changes beget big results. Success breeds success. After a few days or weeks of major dietary changes, patients are more likely to see improvements in weight and blood sugar levels, improvements that reinforce the dietary changes. Uh, furthermore, they may enjoy other health benefits of plant-based eating that may give them further motivation. Those who choose to eat plant-based for their health say it's uh, mostly for general wellness and disease prevention, or to improve their energy levels or immune function. Uh, they felt it gave them a sense of control over their health. It uh, helps you feel better emotionally, it improves your overall health, and makes you feel better. Uh, most felt it was very important for maintaining their health and well-being. For the minority that used it for a specific health problem, it was uh, mostly for high cholesterol or, or weight loss, uh, followed by high blood pressure and diabetes, with most reporting they felt it helped a great deal. But others choose plant-based diets for other reasons, like you know, animal welfare or global warming. It looks like they're more likely to be eating things like you know, vegan donuts, right? sugary and fatty foods, compared to those eating plant-based because of you know, religious or health reasons. I mean, the, you know, the veganist vegan could you know, bake a cake using soda instead of eggs, with frosting covered in marshmallow fluff and chocolate syrup, topped with Oreos, with a side of Doritos, dipped in vegan bacon grease, but fruit for dessert in the form of Pop-Tarts and Krispy Kreme pies. This is a vegan meal. Yes, plant-based diets have been recommended to reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. However, not all plant foods are necessarily beneficial. Like in that pro-vegetarian scoring system, you got points for eating potato chips and french fries just because they were you know, technically plant-based. But Harvard researchers wanted to examine the association of not only an overall plant-based diet, but both healthy and unhealthy versions. So they created the same kind of pro-vegetarian scoring systems weighted towards you know, any sort of plant-based foods and against animal foods, uh, and then also created a healthful plant-based diet index, where at least some whole plant foods took precedence, and you know, Coca-Cola was no longer considered a plant. Then lastly, they created an unhealthful plant-based diet index by assigning you know, positive scores to uh, processed plant-based junk and negative scoring healthier foods and animal foods. And then they found that a more plant-based diet in general was good for reducing diabetes risk, but eating especially healthy plant-based foods did better, nearly cutting risk in half, while those eating more unhealthy plant foods did worse. Uh, now, but is that because they were also eating more animal foods? Uh, people often eat burgers with their fries, so they separated out the effects of healthy plant foods, less healthy plant foods, and animal food. And healthy plant foods were protectively associated, animal foods were detrimentally associated, and less healthy plant foods were more neutral when it came to diabetes risk. Here's what the graph looks like. Higher diabetes risk with more and more animal foods, no protection whatsoever with junky plant foods, and lower and lower diabetes risk associated with more and more healthy whole plant foods in the diet. Uh, so they conclude that yes, plant-based diets are associated with substantially lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes risk, but it may not be enough to just lower the intake of animal foods, but also less healthy plant foods as well.